Hello sewing friends and uh, welcome to my channel. This is Krista's Dress Shop and I'm Krista and I'm really excited today because I get to do another lace hem but this one is more of a basic lace hem without the, all the crazy beadwork, um, without the horse hair that's attached to the lace and beadwork. Um, and if you have been watching my channel, you may have seen my first video on uh, hemming a lace gown and it just happened to be one of the most difficult <laughs> hems, lace hems of my entire career. It had more beadwork than I've ever seen on the bottom of one of these lace hems. It also had horse hair, uh, which is the stiffening agent kind of, um, that this one has horse hair, but it's on an inside layer, a much easier layer to deal with. <laughs> that other one was intense. Um, but if you have a difficult hem with all of those things, I'll go ahead and link that video um, over here uh, and maybe down in the description, just so you can see that one. That one, I was pulling my hair out. <laughs> and I've been sewing a long time, um, but sometimes you come across some that are just uniquely difficult. <laughs> but this is your basic lace hem that most of you are going to run across um, in your sewing career. And it is just basically a scalloped lace edge um, that we're going to be able to lift and um, move up e much easier. So this is gonna be a good basic lace hem video. <laughs> Let's get started. Uh, with how I put it on my mannequin. Okay, so one of the first things I do when I put my dress on the mannequin so that I can get the height for the hem is especially if it's a strapless gown because every time you go to put it on, uh, you might take it off and put it on at a different height. And so I like to mark with chalk kind of my neckline um, and it's erasable. There's different kinds of tailor's chalk. Um, you can just go to your local sewing place or online and buy tailor's chalk. Um, often it comes with a little holder, which um, let me try to holds it and has a cap, stuff like that. Really good for tailor's chalk. However, I have found that on my mannequin itself, it's easier for me to erase it and um, you know, mark it and erase it between gowns and stuff if I just use regular chalk, just like your kids <laughs> use uh, just from the regular store. What is that chalkboard chalk? Um, and all I do is I will mark the neckline That way, when I have perfected uh, the hemline and I go to put it back on, I'm making sure I'm getting this in the right spot. It's not as critical when you have a strap because it tends to go right back into the same spot. But if you have a strapless gown and you're pinning it here and clamping it, if you notice, I have a bigger uh, dress than my mannequin, so I just have it clamped in the back. Um, but especially a strapless gown, you wanna pin the uh, neckline right back to where you started it when you first measured the hem. So that's a little tip. The second thing I do is I get my height correct to my bride's height. Now I have um, pinned where the floor is to my bride as she's standing in her shoes. Very important that she has the shoes she's going to wear at <laughs> the wedding. Um, don't let her change shoes on you. <laughs> and um, then I make sure that my mannequin is exactly that height by adjusting, I don't know if you can see, underneath I can raise and lower my mannequin according to her height. 
And then the other thing I do is my mannequin happens to have a second, um, a loser. <laughs> Not only is there a bracket way up here, but there's this other bracket, I don't know if you can see it here, where I can actually put it up and lock it in. So if I happen to take off my mannequin, if I can't get it off over the head, um, and I happen to take it apart or something like that, I've locked in where my height is. So when I go to check it, um, I'm ready to go. So then once you've got it like that, then you're gonna look at what you need to do um, to hem this dress. Okay, let's get you in close. It's on my mannequin and I'll show you how I pinned it on the bride. Um, the under layers, um, I think I've got my mannequin a little taller than my bride was and that's okay. I'd rather it be just slightly too long uh, than too short. Um, but underneath, when my bride is standing in the dress, I mark the floor to her. Can you see that? I just kind of go through, and I actually do it on both layers. I don't waste time doing the layers separately. Maybe you want to do it a little bit closer, but I have my mannequin to check some of my work and um, make sure that both inside and outside are doing well. And then on this layer here, she happened to have horse hair, and all I did to pin that was to kind of, I don't know if I can show you, you can see I folded it up with my hand underneath and then pinned it just to get it up to the level that I wanted it for her. The level of the outside layer is the most important because that's going to be your layer that shows right here. The other layers can be just a tad shorter so that they get out of her way. Um, but this outer layer, you can see where I have pinned right where the floor is to her and gone all the way around um, to the side seams. So if sometimes my back is not doing well, especially if I've done a lot of brides that day. So I will make sure that I have done my side seam exactly where her floor is. I'll make sure I have across the front really well because this is the most critical part that she's gonna be walking. And then um, I will make sure I have a few in here, but I won't go like really, really close because I'll just go ahead and fill that in here on the mannequin. So once I've done that um, and I've got it on my mannequin, now I'm just checking to make sure I didn't have something, you know, when your bride is standing in her dress, you need to make sure number one, she has the right shoes. Number two, that she is looking straight ahead not down at her feet because that's going to change uh, the hem because when she looks down, it's going to shorten the hem or it lengthens the hem and if you mark it, it'll be too short of a hem. So make sure that you stand her in front of a mirror and she's looking straight ahead, standing nice and tall. The problem is, is that most of the people standing, <laughs> brides, prom girls, they fidget. And so as you're pinning, She's fidgeting. I don't know why they fidget so much, but they totally fidget. And as she's doing that, you're like, oh my gosh. And then you go back and you realize that this whole row, you did a little too long or a little too short because she was standing off to one side. So you have to say, can you stand evenly on both feet? And um, you don't have to lock your knees because you don't want them passing out. Um, put a little bend in your knee, just a little bit, but... Um, just stand nice and tall. And I check that a few times while I'm down there because she will change it on you. And you're like, are you leaning on one foot or are you doing okay? And then, you know, of course, some people have crooked backs. So don't be surprised if you have a little bit different or they have bigger hips, which is going to cause um, differences. But basically on my mannequin, I do a quick check right here. And then I make a decision on how I'm going to alter this dress. Now I'm seeing that this particular dress, it is sewn on. So what I may try to do is unpick some of that, but because my cut line is um, 
well above the lace line. I may just fussy cut this because it's not gonna make a difference in um, that because I'll, a fussy cut is where you take your little scissors and you just kind of cut very detailed. Um, where you don't wanna do a fussy cut is when you have high peaks, you know, and you don't wanna fussy cut up into a high peak because then you go to move it up and you're gonna have holes. You'll want to unpick your peaks um, and then you can fussy cut the lower parts. Um, so just kind of deciding what you're gonna do is the first step um, and on each of those levels. It looks like on this under layer, both of these layers are rolled hem. So I'm gonna go through and detail mark that and then I'll do a rolled hem on each of those. On this one, I'm gonna see how this horsehair is attached. Probably unpick it and just move it up to the level that I need. Sometimes too, for prom dresses especially, because they're not gonna pay you as much as a wedding gown, I will actually um, kind of pin it up all nice and neat, and then I'll actually sew across here and trim my excess. And that's a lot for prom dresses. Um, I'll have to show you that in a whole totally different uh, video. Um, but let me get going and uh, checking these, fussy cutting, uh, getting myself ready for the two hems. Okay, let's look at this lace layer. You can see that I have my mannequin exactly where the bride's height is. And I wanna mark it not on the parts that I'm going to remove of the lace applique, um, but this part's going to stay right here. Um, so I will go ahead and mark it. When you're on an applique, the best part is the purple works great. When you are just on the uh, netting, you're gonna see that it will disappear really, really fast. So the other thing I do while I'm doing this, and I'm noticing too that I've got two levels here. I've got one netting underneath here, which I'm gonna separate, but I wanna mark it as well. Um, and the outer one is in those spots where I wanna mark it, I will do the purple, but then I'll come just in case we have one of those days that has a little more humidity and um, my, my mark would remove easily or disappear from my tool layer, um, I will put a little safety pin there, which helps me lock that in. Um, now I notice this pin is on the applique. This applique is what I wanna remove. I can do one of two things. I can either mark and come right next to it on the tool layer or right next to that, or, oh, this is part that's attached to it. There we go. Or the other thing I can do is come along and hand pick that off. I gotta put my glasses on. Hand pick off the peak. And this is, I'm over here where I'm not in perfect lighting. Usually I'll take that over by the window or kind of a lit up area and try to see where I can see my shine. Um, invisible thread is can be a maddening, especially when you're in the dark like I am over here. <laughs> I cannot see where this is, but if I can get enough of it, then I can get a piece free and start pulling off that. I might have to do that when I get over by my light, but let me show you one that I did right here at the peak. That's one of your most Im important parts or right in the center of the dress. If you see right there, um, I have already pulled away uh, this part of the applique. And so then I'm going to put my new mark on the under part. And I may go ahead and do some of the purple as well. Just so I know how tall to cut that. So I'm gonna go around there 
and kind of mark that all the way around and then fade off to the sides and then I'll come through and fussy cut. Okay, now that I've marked my first layer, um, I also want uh, to look and see, am I going to fussy cut it to cut this out, or am I going to try to um, hand unpick all of the stitching? Most of the time these are with invisible thread. And so let me show you what unpicking it would be like, which, if you only need to take a small amount and lift it, you're gonna need to uh, pull out the thread and remove it and to put it up because you do not wanna fussy cut it and have holes um, in, your, in your hem. So how you do that is find a light, kind of tweak it till you see it kind of sparkle. The invisible thread will sparkle Sometimes, sometimes it's not that great. Go under the underside and see if you can at least pop some of those that you can see. Some are done really easily and you'll unpick it no problem. Others, you will have a nightmare of trying to unpick it um, because the way they sewed it, they did um, way too many stitches per inch, you know, or it just really, really tight stitches. This one isn't too bad, I don't think. Once you get some of it off on the other side, you can kind of see. And sometimes you can just pull. Sometimes you're lucky enough. <laughs> like I said, it's every, every dress is a little different on whether the stitches will allow you. That one is actually letting me pull. I don't know if you can see it. There is a thread here. <laughs> and it's letting me pull it completely. This one's nice. I knew I loved this dress. <laughs> See, and then I can pull it off and then I will just be moving this whole section up. You'll put this uh, line that I made, which was the bridal's, uh, her floor. I'll be taking the bottom of this scallop and putting it at that level right there. So your other option is what if you want to fussy cut it? So let me show you on this section here what a fussy cut is. You definitely want that low enough that it's not going to cause a problem or holes in what you're doing. But basically you take the little tiny scissors here and you are going to cut around flowers. Let me see if I could do a section for you. And I desperately need sharper scissors. These scissors have been probably going for 10 to 16 years and they need to be sharpened or I need new ones. So basically, I'm not gonna cut any farther than that because I don't wanna go above my mark there. But when you fussy cut it, you'll pull that whole thing off and like I said, if you have peaks, um, some, some dresses have really high peaks. You want to unpick the peak and then you can fussy cut the bottom. But then once you remove this layer, now you're going to take that and move it up and you'll sew that back on. So let me put that on fast and I'm going to do a little combo of each. I think on these high points, I'm going to pull it out and then I'm going to fussy cut the rest.
Okay, so now I have my lace completely separate from the skirt. And I know where my center point is. I actually had put a safety pin on it so I knew which one was the center. Um, because this in particular isn't really picky about this lace uh, or where it's centered. However, if you see it, there is a definite pattern. It's not as bad as some of them. Some of them have a high peak and you need to make sure that that center one is exactly in the center of your gown. Um, but you can see that I have, I think what I'll do really quickly is go ahead and trim the excess off of this hem so I have a nice straight hem to deal with. Let me do that really quick and I'll be right back. Oh, also, I forgot to say before I trim that, Normally at this point, I've already done my inner layers. I have a tendency to do my inner layers before I do my external layers, just because um, I feel like a lot of times it's important to have this laying correctly before you can get this to lay correctly. Uh, this one isn't too poofy and strange on the inside, so I'm gonna go ahead and go with it just for the sake of the video, because I really wanna do more uh, video on the lace part of the hem. Um, these parts we can discuss later, but uh, it's basically a rolled hem, which I've already done a video on, and it's reattaching uh, horsehair, which I'll do a separate video on later. Um, so we'll go through those parts quickly. But I really want you to get the concept of um, putting this lace up and then sewing that on so that you have it all hemmed. So once again, let me uh, go ahead and trim that out and I'll be right back. know if you could see it in the in the quick video um, I actually cut two layers together and it just happened to be that they were exactly the same size like one wasn't wider than the other so I just came down and pinned them together and while I was cutting the one layer I just cut the two layers um, I'll do that quite a bit as long as they aren't uh, different widths so I had pinned them together um, so that I could do that. Now I'll use these pins to start pinning together the lace to the outer layer. So as you can see, there were two layers, just a simple tool layer right underneath the outer tool layer. So now the trick becomes getting this up and then just having it um, rest. The thing with the scallop is some brides where this scallops up, they hate seeing their toes. So sometimes I'll go just a little bit longer, just making sure that they don't trip on it, just so they don't see so much of their toes. Judge each of your brides a little differently. Sometimes I'll ask them, would you rather it be a little on the long side you know, which could, if, if you're in the grass, you have to also uh, know, are they getting married on the gra grass or dirt or um, a carpet? Or is their wedding going to be maybe on a, on a solid surface? Because um, those things make a difference because if they're gonna be, say, on a, a nice laminate floor or something like that, like a, a wood floor, then maybe having a trail a little long isn't going to be a problem. If they're going to be in tall grass, it's going to catch. But usually if you have a little bit, um, I noticed if I go right to the edge, they tend to complain about this being too short. So I like it to be just a little bit on the long side there. That's just personal preference, and it depends on your brides and you. Um, I just would rather <laughs> them not complain that it's too short. And I have noticed that brides nowadays are getting more into where they, some of them don't even think they need a hem. They want it to just drag on the floor. I think it's because some of the pictures in Pinterest 
are just kind of the longer hems. They're not, not realizing that you can't walk. So you do have to, maybe when they're talking with you, um, say, oh, okay, you think, you know, you're pretty good with that hem. Well, just make sure you can walk around and have them walk around uh, your studio or your fitting area. And if they are walking just fine, I say, okay, you know, I let them make the decision. Um, but if they're tripping and falling, then you can say, well, would you like me to hem that um, so that it doesn't fall? So what I do, this is a pretty basic, easy one. I go through and in some key spots, um, pin it so it starts to um, land where I want it to land. This under layer just wants to join. It's driving me crazy. <laughs> so um, once I get some key spots, then I'll go back through and pin it a little more carefully. But maybe while I'm trying to just get it up off the ground, and usually this, especially if it's got beads, is kind of weighing down and pulling. So I'll get some key spots. Um, the only thing I don't like about mannequins is these, <laughs> uh, these bars right there. But notice that is doing pretty good. This is my center. And you, then you want your two next on the side to be at the same length. Actually, I'm going to turn my mannequin just a little bit. So there's my center right here. And then there's my two sides, making sure that they're landing right at the same spot. And then you pin that all along. And then if it's a really heavy, awkward hem, I will take it off the mannequin and after I've got the height right, then I'll lay it flat and pin it. I don't really need to do that on this one. This one is pretty straightforward and I'm making sure that it's um, no nothing gapping or anything. And then what I'm gonna do is, I just knocked off my dressmaker's hem that was holding, you can see the one back here. Uh, I use the dressmaker's hem, hem, hem dressmaker ham uh, to hold the weight of the train, but I just pulled it off. So on your side seam, um, you're going to fade it in. Uh, so you're going to come back from the side seam, you know, so many feet depending on, on the train, and you'll just fade that in so that it's all natural. And a lot of times I'm on my table up until I get to the side seams. And then I tend to take it off the table and put it on my carpet down here. Um, that way I can actually see, that's why I have dark colored carpet because it's real easy to see my sides. So let me do that, get it all pinned and then we can get to the sewing machine. Down here on the floor, you can actually see why I love to have a dark colored carpet. Um, I've gone around the front and now I'm coming to this side here. I've pulled the other layers out of the way. I just have this lane here. And now I need, it was down here, I need to kind of even that Kind of just fade it in. This particular one is nice and easy. I told you I love this dress. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and separate my applique right here and I'm going to just overlap that and make it fade. Actually right here is another little loop. I can actually just make it just like it was made to be like that. Let me get my pants.
and I put my pins this direction because if I need to sew over them, it is easier to sew over them. Although I still, just because you have a chance of breaking a needle, uh, will remove them as I come close. But I could kind of roll over those pins if needed. And then this excess underneath here, I'll be trimming out in a way. And voila, a beautiful side seam as it fades. Here's my side seam. Some of them you have to go a lot farther back to get them to blend. This one blended pretty easy. It depends on how much you're taking off. And uh, so now I'll just take it, uh, finish pinning the other side, and then I'll take it and take it to my sewing machine and sew it. Okay, here is where I'm going to bring my hem to my sewing machine. And I'm going to be sewing around uh, this hem applique. The best thing to do, let me show you, is to get, I think it's called a free form or free sew. Let me see if I can switch that. Ah presser foot and I'm going to put that on because free motion, maybe it's free motion. Um, put that on my machine and then I actually have a spot on the side of my machine. You'll have to look up your machine where the feed dogs, those are the teeth that grab onto the fabric and move it forward. I'm going to actually drop those so that they don't move my uh, fabric forward. So I have those dropped um, and that's going to help me be able to free motion uh, any which way I want to move. So let me take you in close for beginning to sew that. Okay and I'm just starting where I've fused together that uh, applique. Let me see. Do I need to move you like here? I don't know. But I'm going to just go along the edge of my applique. Also keeping in mind that underneath what I'm sewing on top can have these little seed beads or um, they can have uh, some of these sequins. And so you could kind of break a needle, just a warning, wear glasses, wear something protective. <laughs> Right there, I'm going to go over my uh, pin, actually. And I'm going around each leaf. I have a couple pointy leaves there, and then around the curl. And I'll kind of remove some of the pins as I go along. Then you just keep, keep sewing. Okay, and I just, stopping it for a second, I had my white thread in and Sometimes that works okay, but I completely forgot, since I was videoing and off my game, <laughs> um, that I wanted to do the clear, invisible 
thread. Um, sometimes on some of these, your white thread is just fine and you can hardly see it. Um, but I was noticing that I could see it a little bit more and I'd rather it be the clear. So I'm gonna thread my machine with that and get started again. you can hear a motorcycle in the background. I just shut the window. It was a beautiful day and uh, I was excited to have my windows open, but our neighbor, since the weather warmed up, has been uh, trying to fix his Harley. <laughs> so uh, lots of rumbling. But anyway, um, I'm doing now just the two simple rolled hem uh, layers. I'm not going to fully get into that in this video, um, but basically I've marked the hem uh, where I'm going to do it. I do it a little bit shorter uh, than the floor. I make sure that it's out of her way a little bit. Um, and so I'll sew it the first time right there on that uh, line and then I'll trim it and then uh, do it over. I have another video if you look up rolled hems. I think I do it on a bridesmaid's dress or a prom dress. Um, so you can check that video out. I'll do more videos on that. I don't want to spend a lot of time today on rolled hems. So I'll do those two layers and then um, I'm going to um, do the horsehair layer. Um, and still haven't decided how I'm going to do it. almost want to put it back on the mannequin once I have the other layers and check it out uh, and see. So let me get those done and then I'll be right back. So my question for today while I sew this is what do you do while you sew? If you notice, I'm watching a cute little gardening video by a girl named Katrin uh, from Ireland, I believe she is. And watch, she's gonna talk here in a minute. She's absolutely adorable. Um, but that's what I do while I sew. Tell me what you do while you sew. Isn't she adorable? I just love her. <laughs> Tell me in the comments what you do while you're sewing. However, <laughs> now the spiders, they must just kind of chill in winter. The cobweb situation is not as bad as previous videos. However, I do need to get the situation under control for the season ahead. Also, it is being cold and wet. And today is the first day there's a bit of sunshine. My mood was like plummeting. And then as soon as the sun came out, I was like, I think I'm solar powered. <laughs> so if it looks sunny, it's actually kind of chilly, but I was just cutting the grass. Hence why I'm very sleep because I was sweating. So I think next week there is to be better weather. Wasn't Katrin cute? Fun to watch gardening while I'm sewing. So while I sew, I dream of gardening. And while I garden, I dream of sewing. <laughs> so I love both things. But now I am done with the hem and I'm just going to press it and then put it on my mannequin and give it uh, one last check. So when I was a little girl, my mom taught me how to sew and um, I love to sew. And the one thing that has stuck with me that she has always said is the difference between something homemade and a professional seamstress is the way you press it. And to finalize 
your uh, sewing with a good pressing and it makes all the difference. So since my mom just passed away two weeks ago, that's on my mind a lot about her teaching me how to sew and her little um, tidbits that she taught me. So I'm passing that on to you now. Okay, let me take you in and show you a quick way to do regular horsehair when you haven't quite charged the customer for the amount of time it takes to undo and redo. I didn't charge her a lot. Uh, I didn't take into account horsehair on this hem. So um, basically, as you can see, I have it folded right behind. Can you tell how I just took this and lifted it up? And I pinned it right on her, but just now with the iron, I made it a little bit nicer. Um, and then I'm going to come right along here and sew that down. And then I will trim away the excess. And that is a great way to do it when you haven't quite charged what you should have for horsehair. And also uh, when you're doing prom dresses, because you really can't charge for that and it will turn out great. So that's a little tip from me. Okay, so I finished the hem. I'm so excited. It looks really, really good. Um, I need to get a little bit of my purple uh, dots off. They will disappear in a couple days. So if you're working with a bride pretty quickly, just dab a little, maybe a baby wipe, a uh, little tiny bit of water or a little baby wipe that has no uh, perfumes or dyes and just dab it and it will disappear. Um, but if you're not meeting with the bride for a few weeks, you can, or a couple days, you can check on it later when you're about to meet with them. But I did the, uh, horsehair hem and that's what that looks like there. And I did the two rolled hems and you can see this is where I've got the most purple. I think you can see some of the purple that just before you meet with the customer and you want to have it removed but I think it's just about perfect. So you want your under layers, you to be able to uh, put your hand underneath them so that when they're walking this, they don't trip on any of these under layers here. And then you want this one uh, to be just either right at the floor or sometimes like I said, I like it to be just a little longer. It will kick out of her way, especially since there is horsehair under there, it'll bounce out of her way. But anyway, hopefully <laughs> some of those tips helped you. If you have any tips uh, for sewing lace hems, we'd love to hear them. Tell us in the comments. Um, also, do you love uh, these lace hems or do you hate lace hems? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. And uh, about how many do you do? Uh, a month or a week or a year. Okay, well, we'll see you in the next video. Um, happy sewing. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Love ya.